All right, well, I'm going to get started. Uh, welcome to the Global Partnership for Zero Leprosy's uh, first webinar. Uh, today's webinar is on a country model for zero leprosy, and we will be going over that model over the next uh, 30 minutes or so, and then we will have time for Q&A. Uh, your screen that you have in front of you, you have an opportunity to ask questions, and you'll see the diagram here at the bottom of your screen. You can uh, raise your hand, uh, and you can ask a question. If you want to raise your hand, one of our staff will uh, help you with any technical issues you have. And if you have questions for any of the panelists who, who are presenting, just pose those in the Q&A box, and uh, we are managing and monitoring those, and so we will uh, take your questions and answer, give you a, a deal with answers and take your questions throughout the course of, of the webinar today. And so with, with those things out of the way, and I will give those reminders uh, perhaps between our speakers, uh, or I will encourage our speakers to remind everyone during their presentations to uh, point people to the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, as I'm sure we'll have people joining us throughout the course of our, of our webinar today. So with that out of the way, uh, I'd like to introduce our speakers. First, uh, I am Bill Simmons. I'm the chair of the Global Partnership for Zero Leprosy Leadership Team. I'm the CEO of American Leprosy Missions in Greenville, South Carolina in the United States. And joining me on today's call, uh, we have Courtney Dusenberry. She is the uh, director uh, of the Secretariat based in Atlanta, Georgia. We have Christine Fenenga, and Christine is the coordinator for Operational Excellence Working Group, and she has been the primary uh, responsible party uh, driving and spearheading the, uh, the toolkit that will be discussed today. And then Jeff Warren, the CEO of ILEP, uh, our membership association of, uh, of leprosy associations around the world, and who is a member of the leadership team. And so th these panelists will take us through the content this morning, and we expect to uh, be done uh, with the uh, main content portion oh, somewhere over the next 20 to 25 minutes. So with that out of the way, I will invite our first speaker, Courtney, to uh, get us started. Thank you, Bill. Um, welcome, everyone, to our, our webinar. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about the partnership, and then Christine um, will share more about the country model, and Jeff Warren um, will share with us about the par partnership. So this partnership uh, was formed for a couple reasons. The first was to facilitate the alignment of the leprosy community and to really bring together people in alignment um, to have a little bit more collaborative action working together towards zero leprosy. The vision of the partnership was established by our leadership team during its first meeting in Colchester, UK last March. And the vision of the organization is no disease, no disability, no discrimination, and no stigma. There are a number of groups that came together to form the partnership. You see some of them listed on the screen here. Our leadership team is comprised of Novartis, IDEA, which is the Global Association of Persons Affected by Leprosy, uh, WHO and the UN Special Rapporteur as Observers, ILEP, the International Leprosy Association, the Leprosy Research Initiative, the Sasakawa Health Foundation, and the National Leprosy Programs of Brazil, Ghana, and India. We also have Dr. Karen Smith on the board as the representative of the scientific community. During our last leadership team meeting in Greenville, South, North Car South Carolina, yeah, um, the board decided that they would like to have two additional positions, one for representatives of other organizations belonging to the partnership, and one for individuals belonging to the partnership. And over the summer, we will be having elections for those two positions and adding those persons to the board. We have uh, an interesting history for this partnership. 
the members of the leadership team organization had sponsored a stakeholder meeting or a stakeholder analysis and meeting in 2017. They had looked at other disease-specific groups, such as those for schistosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, malaria, et cetera, and seeing how these groups and coming together, bringing together many different partners working in, in different aspects of a disease could really um, become much more powerful and aligned in their effort. So with that in mind, these leadership team members decided to form this group in late 2017, and it was chartered in 2018. Our leadership team provides strategic direction, oversight, and guidance to our partnership. The Secretariat here in Atlanta, Georgia, manages the daily operations, communications, and fundraising for the partnership. We have three working groups. The first is the Research Agenda Working Group, which has just completed its work last month. This research working group included over 150 persons who worked together to develop a, an aligned research agenda for leprosy. And this research agenda is now in pre-publication phase. We're expecting it to be published later this year. We also have an operational excellence working group that Christine will share much more about. And finally, we have a partnership and resource mobilization group. And the purpose of this group is to raise, find resources for leprosy work um, and also to, to increase um, advocacy for leprosy activities around the world. And this uh, research uh, resource mobilization group is being worked on in close partnership with all of the members of the leadership team. Lastly, we have our members. We have close to 500 members now um, from around the world, and, and we hope that many of you are on the call today. I wanted to share with you a little bit about our operating framework. Um, last year, we met with the leadership team for the first meeting in Colchester, and during that meeting, and in two subsequent meetings, we had strategic planning discussions about the overall goal and purpose of the organization. The chart in front of you now is a little bit complex. I'd like to read backward, if I could, from the right-hand side, which is the organization's overall goal. In every country, no disease, no disability, no discrimination, and no stigma. Moving to the left from this overall goal, some of our midterm goals are to improve national surveillance, sorry, pardon me, improve national capacity in disease surveillance, a diagnosis, early diagnosis, prevention, and treatment. Um, we would also hope to see new tools and approaches for leprosy implemented, and we'd like to see a measurable decrease in disability, discrimination, and st stigma. In 2020, our midterm goal is really to put in place a country model that will allow countries to have the, the assessment tool, um, the supporting tools, and resources to be able to move their own country programs towards zero leprosy. And this is something that Christine will focus on today. Also on this chart, you can see that the research agenda's work has been to support a research, an aligned research agenda. Items from this research agenda we will be seeking funding for will then be, te be tested tools and approaches, and these approaches and tools we hope will fold into the country model over time. On the bottom of the chart, you can see the Partnership and Resource Mobilization Working Group and how it impacts the country work. So we are developing funding sources now for items from the research agenda and also for the zero leprosy country model in individual countries and globally. With this, I'd like to turn over the agenda to Christine Fenenga. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, as, as Courtney and Bill already mentioned, my name is Christine Venenga, and I am the coordinator of the Operational Excellence Working Group. 
This group is the second working group under the Global Partnership. And in contrast to the research agenda group, this group focuses not on scientific research, but on operations and best practices in the field. So how can these valuable experiences be captured and documented and shared in order to help countries reaching zero leprosy? So the group has close to 200 members with a broad diversity of background. So they're program managers, health professionals, persons affected, trainers and academics. The group is led by a steering team uh, comprising of five national leprosy program managers and facilitators mainly from ILEP partners and further there is a representative of the WHO, there's a chair and a coordinator. Our group is organized in subgroups focusing on five sub themes that cover the full continuum of uh, leprosy care. On the Zero Leprosy website, you'll find more details about these different subgroups. The steering group and the subgroups are meeting monthly through online conferences and to discuss their work. We have different linguistic groups, so this makes it also easy for everybody to participate in the discussion without feeling barriers for language. Now, on the next slide, I will tell you a little bit more about the country model. This is central in our work. Box one, top left, shows the documentation of best practices that are collected, reviewed for their quality, and shared through an online toolkit and help desk. The Zero Leprosy Toolkit will be officially launched in September during the International Leprosy Congress in Manila. Top right, box two, shows the second component of the model. This is the country leprosy review that the Global Partnership will conduct hand in hand with the host country's Ministry of Health, the WHO, and in close collaboration with all stakeholders, including persons affected. A special comprehensive review tool was developed, but this will be tailored to the country's situation. It is important to note here and I repeat what Courtney already mentioned in her presentation, that our vision is zero leprosy. When I talk about comprehensive, I mean that we will look at all dimensions, which goes beyond health only. So we're also looking at human rights, fighting discrimination and exclusion. Through this national partnership approach, countries are helped to map their achievements, opportunities, challenges and gaps. And this will then result in a report with findings and recommendations. And the partnership will not stop there, but it will go a little bit further. At the bottom of this slide, you see box three, the third component of the country model, which is the country roadmap. So after completion of the review with concluding findings and recommendations, we aim to support the country in developing a medium to long-term plan to reach zero leprosy. It focuses on all dimensions of zero leprosy. Note that each country roadmap will be unique, as it will be based on a range of factors such as geographical context, stage of development, level of burden of disease, and so on. Each country sets out its own path with their own priorities, methods, and with their own partners. The plan includes budget lines and milestones, such that progress can be measured over time. To implement the plan, core responsibilities are set out, divided among and agreed upon by all the partners. Alignment, collaboration and effectiveness are core in this multi-stakeholder uh, process. And where applicable, the national partnership plan will also indicate linkages or integration with other disease programs. The resulting country-owned roadmap should be valuable in guiding a country for their uh, leprosy programs, and it can also be used to present to donors for financial support. Now, the last slide, which I like to show you, is a more detailing of the, the country review and roadmap planning. As Courtney already said, 
This year we aim to support two to maybe three countries, and we will start in Nepal. Dr. Rabindra Baskota, he is the National Leprosy Program Manager, is in the lead of this process that will take place in July. Results of Nepal will be presented in the International Leprosy Congress in Manila. The Global Partnership aims to support high burden as well as low burden countries. So a second country, Morocco has already submitted a request. On the Zero Leprosy website, you will find a page where countries can express interest to engage with the Global Partnership and to start this country model process. After first discussions between the interested country and the Global Partnership Secretariat, the country will be asked to develop a terms of reference. A multi-sectoral, multidisciplinary review team will then be established, including persons affected. Subsequent steps will then be followed. Now, some last words. This country model and national partnership approach is new, and we will use this year and also next year to learn how we can further improve the approach by doing. We need everyone uh, to support this, governments, NGOs, individuals. And for example, you can all contribute and benefit from the toolkit. We expect that the collection of best practices is an ongoing process. So if you know a practice that is worth sharing, then please contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. We'll invite uh, Jeff Warren to take us through uh, the role of partners. Uh, thanks, Bill. Um, I can perhaps remind uh, listeners that about the Q&A box that's at the bottom of your screen, which you can use at any time to, um, uh, to pose any questions, which will be dealt with later on. Um, Courtney mentioned earlier um, that the, um, really the purpose of, uh, of the global partnership um, was to build uh, alignment within the leprosy community so that we could accelerate our, our efforts uh, towards zero leprosy through effective uh, collaboration. Um, and so the um, success of the global partnership for zero leprosy uh, really depends on this broad group of partners being closely aligned. And uh, to us, it's the same at country level. Um, and successful partnership at country level or global level is not just about involvement. Uh, it's about belief um, and determination uh, that zero leprosy can be achieved. If we lack belief that zero leprosy is possible, and if we lack determination to achieve it, then we are going to stay stuck where we currently are. So I'm talking in this section about partners. Now, when I say partners, I'm thinking very broadly about the leprosy community. So I'm thinking about local organizations of persons affected, uh, local civil society organizations or NGOs, government ministries and government departments, uh, ILET members, Novartis, World Health Organization, uh, international NGOs, and more. And I can see five areas in which joint action uh, by these partners is critical. And the first, uh, joint action by partners is essential in the review process itself, the country review process. The lead for country reviews, as Christine has just mentioned, must come from governments. But other partners should be involved at all points, uh, preparation, uh, experts for the review itself, uh, facilitation, um, of field visits, for example, um, engagement during the review to make sure that all partners' voices are heard, and then in the formulation of the zero leprosy roadmap. Second, joint action by partners is essential to form national partnerships for zero leprosy. Now, these are the national equivalent of the Global Partnership for Zero Leprosy. So, like the Global Partnership, they should include government, ILET members, organizations of persons affected by leprosy, WHO, local NGOs, and more. We think that unless national partnerships for zero leprosy are formed and take a lead, it's going to be difficult to sustain progress. And in most countries, there is no such partnership today, and it won't happen spontaneously. Today's partners in country need to initiate these national partnerships for zero leprosy. 
Third, all of us as partners must be willing to refocus our work and our priorities and our funding in line with the Zero Leprosy Roadmap. I think that this is going to be a major challenge when partners have been working in the same way or in the same place for a long time. Leprosy isn't static. We may find that we need to redeploy our energies or activities or our funding from one place to a different place or from one kind of program to another kind of program. Zero leprosy isn't going to be business as usual and I think some changes are likely to need to be quite radical. Fourth, new partners will be needed. Very few of the current partners, maybe none of the current partners, uh, are equally strong in all of the facets or capabilities of what it takes to get to zero leprosy. So additional skills and resources are going to be needed. These may come from new partners who are not currently engaged or whose engagement may grow. Today's partners are going to need to look at the roadmap and think about what capabilities are needed and then actively reach out to other organizations to get involved. And finally, zero leprosy for many countries is a long-term goal. And because it's long-term, it will be easy to slip back into the elimination as a public health problem like in the last 10 years. As partners, we need to believe genuinely that zero leprosy can be achieved and we need to be determined to achieve it. So we need together as partners, as a collaborating group of partners, we need together to keep that vision of zero leprosy alive in each country. So to summarize, collaborative action by all of today's partners in every country is needed, firstly in the review process itself, second in forming and promoting national partnerships for zero leprosy, Third, in meeting the challenge of refocusing our priorities and our funding in line with the Zero Leprosy Roadmap. Fourth, in reaching out to new partners who may have the additional capabilities that are needed. And finally, in keeping the vision of Zero Leprosy alive in the medium and longer term. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Christine, as well. Uh, draw your attention uh, to the Q&A box. We do have... Uh, a question and I have a question or two as well, but I will invite Christine. Uh, Wim is asking us, uh, Wim Van Brockle has asked about uh, the step nine and the triple approach. So uh, if you would take that question up for us. The question is, if everyone can't see it, should we not add step nine from Christine's last slide to the triple approach since it is an essential part of getting the roadmaps implemented? Thank you, uh, Bill, and thank you, Wim, for this, uh, for this question. It is indeed uh, an important uh, component, we think, uh, not only to, to develop a plan uh, as joint partners, but also to see to it that uh, the roadmap get implemented. Um, so when, when developing the, the ambitious roadmap uh, per country, uh, priorities are set and partners are uh, joining in this, this meeting. Um, so you, you also have defined then where your gaps are and what you really need also to, uh, to work on uh, in future. With this information, it will be possible to look also which partners are going to work on this and, and um, where does the funding come from. And if the funding also uh, requires additional funding, then uh, a proposals can be developed jointly to, to seek for other donors. And of course, uh, this whole uh, roadmap plan should also have very clear milestones uh, to measure also the progress and also that will be uh, conducted jointly. Um, so I think that for now, this is also what we, um, what I can say about this, so that, that there is indeed a need also to do the follow-up and also to find maybe additional resources if there's not sufficient in the country and with the partners already, then we also have to, to make sure that uh, these things are, are possible. Good, thank you. Well, I have a I have a question, uh, Christine. Could you help the, the group understand, perhaps in a uh, in a brief way, the 
how implementing the model uh, will create a, a significant difference in outcome than perhaps uh, in the case of Nepal, which would be doing its own review uh, and uh, process uh, on its own uh, in any event. Uh, how will engaging the model really move us forward in a meaningful way towards zero in your perspective? Well, I think if, if you look at the model, it has these three components. Um, it has, first of all, uh, engagement of a lot of partners to get this zero leprosy uh, toolkit. And um, we are now already receiving very interesting uh, best practices from all over the world. And, and as you know, these, these practices have very often not been documented very well. So by documenting them and giving this uh, in, in an online toolkit, which is accessible to everybody uh, and also in different languages, it will be easier also to get new ideas. So this toolkit is, is, is available for everybody. Um, that is a new component, uh, you could say. Then the country reviews, I think it's also being done now in a different way that we are looking at a broader perspective also and not only at the medical uh, components, but much more um, also to a comprehensive uh, number of factors. And a lot of partners are involved in that. We try also to engage persons from other um, uh, countries in this uh, leprosy uh, review, this country review. And that makes also that you get a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support in this. And the visioning uh, country roadmap, I think, is, is, is also uh, something new. Quite often the uh, uh, country reviews which have been conducted are very much um, uh, leading to a report with conclusions and some recommendations. And these uh, recommendations are, of course, discussed with the Ministry of Health of that uh, particular country. But um, by, by just leaving it there and not looking at the next steps, like well, what is going to happen with it, um, um, it also leaves it completely to a country and not to a, a broader group of uh, uh, stakeholders. Um, the vision in country roadmap is also a longer term uh, map and that means also it, it, it is um, not about five years but a longer term uh, 10 till 20 years uh, and that gives also a longer perspective uh, for a longer period. I think that is also quite different from what it was first. So it will help also uh, countries to make their strategic plan but also to see what in the longer term they have to concentrate on. So there, there are different elements now if you compare to how it was and, and what we try to achieve here. Sure. Uh, another one, Christine, if you would uh, add, answer Sarah Hassas's question, which is, would you please give a few examples of some of the components of the toolkit? It's a big, it's a, it's a small word, uh, and there's a lot of things in it. So maybe some of the, when we say toolkit, what are some of the critical things that would be a part of a toolkit? Yes, thank you uh, for this question also. The toolkit, um, as said, is, is going to be uh, divided in, in different components. We have uh, uh, PEP, early, early detection uh, of, of disease and treatment. We have disability, we have stigma, and we have also components which are more cross-cutting, cross like human resources, like uh, monitoring and evaluation. So what we have been doing at the moment is, is trying to find uh, best practices uh, of all these different topics. Um, and that means also that, for example, for um, uh, post-exposure prophylaxis, we have looked also what have we learned already now from the countries where PEP has been implemented. So people from that, that area uh, have come with, with uh, clear examples uh, and also training manual, manuals um, or um, uh, kind of other tools which they have been using, which then can also be used by others who also want to start with uh, post-exposure prophylaxis. So it can be, um, it can be uh, manuals, it can be uh, uh, training tools, it can be uh, um, uh, different approaches which they show. 
Very important is also that in all these best practices, we have a number of criteria where we are looking at. That's, for example, effectiveness, efficiency, um, uh, transferability. So we have a number of criteria which we use to see whether the best practices which are submitted are meeting these criteria and that also this best practice is useful for others to use. And uh, we have a question and I'll take this one. It uh, says uh, from NLR, it's one of the main challenges for the future is the increasing shortage of people with adequate in all aspects of expertise required to achieve zero leprosy. Has the global partnership already discussed ways of addressing this? Well, the, uh, as leprosy becomes more rare, uh, and, and we are not in a unique position as it relates to other diseases around the world that face similar challenges. And while it's true that the human expertise will diminish, which is, in some ways is good news, uh, because uh, the reason the human expertise is diminishing is because of success, and people are not as interested in going to a field where uh, disease is becoming more rare. Uh, and so that's good news for our progress, but it does uh, impact our capacity to uh, to manage ongoing, uh, reaching zero. But that's where the urgency uh, to the primacy of, of tools to interrupt transmission are critical, which is one of the key uh, aspects of discussion at the partnership, uh, supporting both current tools that might interrupt transmission, as well as the development of new tools and also uh, tools and technology that are being developed now, whether that's digital diagnostics, uh, whether it's telemedicine, uh, and overcoming some of the uh, gaps that may uh, exist in human expertise with uh, the advances in technology that might uh, present the opportunity to maintain uh, pressure on incidents around the world. And so, yes, it is a, a, a large topic of conversation because we both recognize uh, that it is true, uh, that, but also that that might present an opportunity. And so there's a lot of discussion, both in the research and operational excellent groups about uh, how to, how to uh, approach this. So, uh, so that is uh, something that is definitely on all of our minds as, as we move forward towards zero. Um, I'll give just another minute while I give some closing re uh, remarks and instructions. If there are other questions, uh, you can drop those in the box. But uh, we do appreciate everyone making time for this introductory uh, webinar uh, from the Global Partnership for Zero Leprosy. The recording and slides, they'll be sent to all of you who uh, are attendees. You will get those later this week if you requested a copy of the recording when you registered. If you have other questions, uh, you can just email them uh, to info, you see that at the bottom of the screen there, info at zeroleprosy.org, uh, info at zeroleprosy.org. And I know that one of the team uh, will be happy to address any questions, concerns, and thoughts or ideas that you have. And I think that would be my closing remark would be that uh, we appreciate everyone who has taken time to attend uh, the, the webinar today. The success of the partnership is only as strong as its participation from people around the world, and you are part of having made that happen. So we appreciate you taking the time to join us. We encourage you to, uh, to disseminate this and the link to the webinar to people in your organization and to other partners that you work with. And uh, together, I know that we're going to make progress uh, toward our shared goal, which is uh, to see a world one day uh, without leprosy. And so I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us and we will sign off.